all the things they're going to eat will sell it at the gate for a cheap price and the man leaning on the right hand side of the king said that cannot be even if the lord will open the windows of heaven and then elisha said you'll see it with your eyes but you'll not eat out of it and the following morning this uh, king with a army they heard a blast it's like a bombshell and he said the king of israel and the king of israel by the way is at home is in this palace fearful afraid because when the lepers when they went in there and they saw the food and they get and they said we're not doing well let's go to the king and give him a permission when they informed the king the king himself was afraid and he said i know what those people have done they want to deceive us and they are somewhere and then when we go out because they know we're hungry they're going to pounce on us and kill us now he was afraid they were afraid because they had something and what they had was not real and he said we're very sure you are the one that makes the conclusion yourself and then you begin to paint the picture i'm gone i'm through i'm dead they have come to take me and there's nobody running after you and we're just fearing because it's false experience appearing real number two faceless enemies afflicting reason faceless enemies that's fear faithless enemies afflicting reason that is your reasoning faculty is afflicted because of faceless enemies enemies that you don't see enemies that are not there and how many times we are praying i will say god destroy those enemies and where are they lord get rid of them and then we fast and pray and cast out and cast off and whatever and those enemies were fighting their faceless enemies but they afflict our reasoning we're not able to reason well because we think the enemy is there, the enemy is there, the enemy is there. Look at Psalm 53, verse 5. Psalm 53, verse 5. And there are things you don't even have to fight at all because they're not even there. It says in 53, verse 5, in the Psalms, look at that, it says, Psalm 53, verse 5, There were they in, what kind of fear? Great fear. Tell me the rest. Where no fear was. They were in great fear where no fear was. And that's why as we talk about fear not, we don't just want to come and start casting out and casting off and stamping and, you know, jumping on it, trampling on this and trampling on that. Maybe we're trampling on something that is not even there. Maybe we're trying to cast out something that is not even there. And all we need to do is evaluate and examine and see what are we afraid about? And what is it we're really praying about? And here it says they were in great fear, great, great fear. And yet it says where no fear was. What is fear then? Number two, faceless enemies. We don't even know them. They don't show up. But their faceless enemies afflicting our reasoning faculty. Number three, frequently expected adversity realized frequently expected adversity realized that that's fear look at job chapter 3 in job chapter 3 you've been wondering how could that happen to job he attracted it by the fear that he had let's look at job chapter 3 verse 25 it says for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and then he said and that which i was afraid of is come unto me then he said in verse 26 i was not in safety neither had i rest neither was i quiet yet trouble came he said uh, he was rich but he was not in safety and he had all these children and a good wife and he was not in security or safety and he said he had been afraid every time what does that mean every time he woke up he said I wonder whether these children will still remain alive by the time I get old. And they need to be taking care of me. And because of that fear and that fear and that fear, the fear, actually fear is a form of faith in the negative. As your faith attracts the fulfillment of the promises of God, so fear will attract all the causes and all the things you're afraid about. And that's why Job himself said, this is chapter 3, something had happened in chapter 1. Something happened in chapter 2. As he sat back and he said, now I understand. 
This is not new. This is what I've been fearing all the time. And Job, why were you fearing that all the time? I think Satan had more information about Job than Job himself had. You know what Satan said? God, you have made a hedge around him. I cannot even penetrate. And I cannot destroy what he has. About his house, about his children, about his family. You have made a hedge around them. And Job never knew that. And he feared unnecessarily. And now when everything came, he now said, For the sin which I greatly feared, greatly, greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Was fear then frequently expected adversity now realized. Number four. Fantasized exaggeration above reality. That's fear. Uh, there's a little idea, there's a little thought that comes to you. And then you start expanding it and building on it and it's growing up. And it's all fantasy. And you fantasize that exaggeration above reality. And let's look at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. This is what people fear. And you think about what, you know, Pentecostal churches are doing today. And the deliverance ministers, what they're doing. Many times we're just wasting precious time fighting enemies that are not there. And many times we're just praying and saying, instead of sit the person down and say, now, what are you afraid about? Let the fellow talk and let the fellow explain to you what is it he's afraid about or she's afraid about. And then after that explanation, then you will know whether what he needs is not prayer, but some explanation and teaching from the word of God so that we'll know that this kind of fear, F-E-A-R, may just be fantasized, exaggeration above reality. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 13. This kind of exaggeration above reality. We're looking at chapter 13 of Numbers, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as what? I think uh, that, that's, that's exaggeration. You've seen grasshoppers before. A grasshopper is not up to, you know, my fist, very small, maybe like these two fingers. And then you see a whole man like a giant. And it says, we, the Israelites, are, are, how can you say that? We know that there have been slaves in Egypt. And we know that when somebody is doing manual work, his muscles are developed. And we know that these people didn't have any chariots. And they were walking from Egypt and they were walking to the land of promise. These were strong people. And these were people that they have been developed physically. And yet they are now telling us that in comparison, they are grasshoppers to those giants. That's what they looked in their sight. And then they said in that part of that verse 33, and so we were in their sight. Hey, how do you know that you are grasshoppers in their sight? I thought you were spies. They were spies that went into the land as spies. They didn't go to discuss with the people. They didn't listen to the people. They didn't know what the people were thinking about them. And they said, in their sight, we were like this. My friend, that's exaggeration. It's like, I cannot go to my place of work today. There is a lion in the way. And the lion will kill me. That's exaggeration. My boss is, you know, is such a tyrant, he's going to fire everybody. That's exaggeration. If he fires everybody, who is going to get the work done? The recession, we don't have anything to eat. That's exaggeration. How are people moving on the street if they have nothing to eat? We exaggerate too much. And then we're trying to fight this kind of fear, which is just fantasized exaggeration above reality. Look at verse 14. And all the congregation lifted their voice and cried, Hey, why are you crying? Because of what they said. How do you know what they said is right? They didn't bring back any picture. There was no mobile phone and there was no camera to bring back pictures and actually compare. How do you act on the information somebody has given you and then you begin to cry? You know what people do to us? The things they tell us. And they say, we are like grasshoppers. And if these great men, representatives of each of the tribes, if they went to the land and then they look like grasshoppers and all the people, the giants, 
they also looked at them as grasshoppers. Why didn't they kill them before they came back? Why were they still alive? And by the way, they even caught the pomegranates and the fruits, and they carried on their shoulders. How did they give you a chance to cut all that down? Don't you reason? And then the people began to cry. And now they said, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel, how many of them? I said, how many of them? Do you see how wrong information can just set us on edge? Make us afraid unnecessarily. And then make us to follow another direction and just destroy our lives and destroy our destiny. And then he says, all those children, he said, they murmured against Aaron and against Moses. What's Moses' fault? And what's Aaron's fault? Do you see how we fight the wrong people because we're afraid? And then we we'll criticize the wrong people because we're afraid. And then it says now, would God that we had what? Again? But we don't need to die. Even if you're afraid, oh, you should have said, would God will stay in this place where we are? And we don't go to the place. After all, the tribe of Reuben and Manasseh and God, they stayed on this other side. So, if you're afraid, you don't need to die. You can stay where you are and not go to where the giants are. Do you see, when people are afraid, they lose their reasoning faculty. They lose what we call common sense. And common sense becomes uncommon. And they cannot reason that this is what to do. That's the reason why when any fear strikes your heart, you know what you do? You, you stop and you reason through. You put everything down. And then you say, what am I afraid about? One, there are giants in the land. Then two, we look like grasshoppers. All right? If that's the problem we have, no fear. There's nothing to fear. Have we gone through this kind of experience before? With the children, with the people of Egypt, were we masters or were they equal? No. Those Egyptians too, they were like giants. How about Pharaoh? How about their chariots? And then the thousands of chariots that came, when were the Red Sea? What happened to them? They perished and were still alive. Well, those giants, God will know how to deal with them. If you will reason through what you've gone through already, up till this stage, are you like 20 years of age now? You've seen trouble in this lifetime since you were born. Are you now 30 years of age? You've seen some challenges since you were born. And if you see a challenge now, instead of, fe instead of fearing the giants ahead of you, just sit down and say, well, what giants am I fearing? One, I've not even seen them. Am I sure that these spies that are telling us this, am I sure they are right? Am I sure they are not exaggerating? Even if they are not exaggerating, I write it down. Then I say, have I gone through something like this before? Was there somebody that said, no, they will not go, I will not release them? Was there somebody that said, no, they're going to die here? Was there somebody that even tried to a kind of drown the children of Israel in the, in the Red Sea, in River Nile? Yes, there was. Did we have the victory? We had the victory. Well, the God of yesterday is the God of today and the God of tomorrow. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Then there'll be no fear. And we don't have to, you know, sweat and pray and cry and weep and all that. Just reason through and you'll be delivered in Jesus' name. And then it says, would God have died in this wilderness? And wherefore has the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword? With our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to what? And you know, sometimes you are running away from the unknown and then you run into real real known furnace of fire you've forgotten what you saw in egypt you've forgotten what you went through in egypt and because of fear and because of something that is not real they were ready now to go back to pharaoh to say pharaoh we're back again we're sorry we left and when you say sorry to pharaoh and you say sorry to those egyptians uh-huh. Now you know you are wrong for being converted. You know you are wrong for running away and forsaking idol. And now you are saying you are sorry. If you are really sorry, you have to make a covenant you will never go again. 
how will the promise made unto Abraham be fulfilled? Just because of this kind of fantasy, fantasized exaggeration above reality. What's fear number five? Faithless expression acknowledged repeatedly. Faithless expression acknowledged repeatedly. When you, when you have an expression of unbelief, and you acknowledge that repeatedly, repeatedly. You say that and say that and say that all over again. It uh, becomes like, you know, a pathway in your, in your system. How can I explain to you? I think, uh, I think some of us here are scientifically inclined. Are you some of us? I say that some of us scientifically inclined. Okay, uh, you know, sometimes uh, as we think about our brain, we have all these uh, atoms and molecules and neuron neutrons, and then you have in the connection, you know, in our brain, there's connection between one cell and the other. And whenever you have a thought in your mind, it's like passing through a kind of path, and it's like a little string from one connection to the other. When you think about it once, you think about it again, you think about it again, it becomes very, very strong. And when any other thing that looks like what you thought about comes up again, it will just go through that same route and then spark the fear and the pain in your heart again. That's the reason why if you're going to break that circle of fear, you kind of snap that thing, you wake up yourself and say, no, what am I thinking about? What am I thinking like that? What have I seen that is making me afraid? And you caught that kind of path that leads to that painful thing. But when you repeat it every time, everything that thing sparks up, then you're afraid. You're afraid of this, afraid of that. And fear will just be your master. But tonight, we're going to break it. But look at this number five. What's number five? Faithless expression, you give expression to acknowledge repeatedly. Look at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 10. Exodus 14, verse 10. This is what they always said whenever they had any challenge. And it's like, you know, they used to that kind of expression of unbelief. Repeatedly, repeatedly acknowledging that repeatedly. In verse 10 it says, and when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel did what? Cried unto God. Verse 11, and they, wait, wait, they cried unto God. And without waiting for answer for their prayer, because they cried unto God, they just turned around and spoke unto Moses. Think about that. If you are going to worry, you are going to complain, you are going to accuse Moses, you are going to, you know, do what you normally do against Moses and begin to criticize and begin to chew them, chew the leaders in the church. Why do you pray at all? I'm surprised about these people. It's the same thing they always did. It says they cried unto the Lord. And the very next verse, the ne very next breath, they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, as thou taking us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. 